Listen, the whole idea of The Poptimist is to talk about what I'm loving reading right now. I don't think of myself as a critic. I'm more of an enthusiastic cheerleader of great books. I mean, I'm not here to slag on debut novelists or slam genres that I'm not familiar with or, you know, criticize books where the problem could have just as easily been me as opposed to the book itself. One star reviews may be clickbait gold, but that's just not what this channel is about. Which, of course, is a long-winded way of saying that this particular video is probably going to diverge a little bit from that ideal. And frankly, I blame the Discord book club for this. We ended up talking about this book, feeling the same way about it, but we had such a good time dismantling it, I felt like I had to share here. Pod is Laylene Paul's third novel and has been most recently been shortlisted for the Bailey's Women's Prize for Fiction, joining such luminaries as Barbara Kingsolver and Maggie O'Farrell. Pod is basically the story of dolphins trying to survive in an increasingly hostile ocean. Or at least that's what the dust jacket might say. Frankly, this reads like underwater furry fanfic. Yiffy, fishy, fic. Like a self-published novel from someone a little bit too much into the subaquatic world. Like someone who is cetacean radicalized after an awkward, non-consensual encounter with a pack of dolphins while they were swimming down south. Because if you don't already know, Dolphins, despite their absolutely killer marketing and PR campaigns that presents them as beautiful, happy, incredibly smart undersea mammals, are in fact kind of rapey. Which leads me to ask, should a book about dolphins come with trigger warnings? Because I was not prepared. We are not talking about one or two rapey bad apples. We are talking an entire ocean of Brock Turners and Andrew Tates. We... See them cruising the underseas, and these dolphin packs are basically like wearing wraparound Oakley shades with tribal tattoos and truck nuts hanging off of their tail fins. It's basically like a dolphin fraternity cruising frosh week, a dolphin junior A hockey team crashing a high school prom. There is more than one episode where a pack of male dolphins essentially run a train on an unwilling female, or coercively mate with, which is the preferred term when talking about dolphins. At its heart, Pod is essentially the story of a lone female dolphin setting out on her own and ending up getting trafficked, which does not make for compelling dust jacket copy. I was expecting swimming underwater with these graceful undersea mammals, and instead I'm learning about female dolphin natural family planning and spiral vaginas and wondering how I got here. How exactly am I supposed to be feeling about this thorny issue of Dolphin Me Too? And who is this leg-walking, hand-waving, non-blowhole-having white woman to be writing about these issues? Hashtag Dolphin Own Voices. But don't worry, this book isn't entirely about sexual and physical assault. It's something that also celebrates love. Although maybe a tad too enthusiastically, this at times reads like an undersea penthouse forum, which if you do not know or are too young to remember, is essentially literary porn hub. There is an abundance of orgasmic ocean love going on here. Explosions of lust, massive amounts of erotic emissions everywhere. It has gotten to the point, I don't know if I'm ever going to swim in the ocean again because now I know why it's so damn salty. It's also the reason I am staying the hell away from Laylene Paul's earlier work, The Bees, because I do not need honey ruin for me. This thing is all over the place. We get a long middle episode featuring a trans fish, and then there's this sort of brief aside featuring a female puffer fish, and a, as I was reading it, I couldn't help but imagine her as a Vietnamese nail salon owner. Anyway, she's currently being courted by two male puffer fish who are frantically digging their undersea crop circles to entice the female, and she's unable to choose between the two until a passing fish says, why not both? And so we get a Fugu three-way. And of course, there is the spawning moon where the entire ocean gets off, apparently, which leads to several pages of clam bukkake. I just wasn't ready. I guess it's that feeling of whiplash because I read this immediately after reading No Violet Bulawayo's Glory, which had been nominated for a booker and also features animals as main characters. But in No Violet's book, the Animals are recreating the coup d'etat against former Zimbabwean President Robert Mugabe and the Gukuru Hundi massacre, and not devoting pages to sea spunk and weird dolphin behavior. I mean, 
This book is just all over the place. Like I said, that idea of a lone female setting out on her own, essentially getting sex trafficked. And then right in the middle, this long episode, which is basically Undersea Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. Remember the dolphin's secret of sound as well as the duck feet? For more, it's a fine person. Mystical gypsy manta race is, of course, an episode of a military trained dolphin who's going through the problems and survived its recent suicide mission. I mean, some of them can feel timely. A lot of those dolphins or tricy ops are constantly gossiping, carrying on the wildly things that are of zero importance and addicted to the non effects of the shark of fish. It's a way of deadening the stress and pain that's constantly surrounding them as their once familiar environment seems to be changing for the worse. We're seeing the effects of oil drilling, commercial fishing, plastics, discarded netting, and climate change from the dolphin's perspective. So who could blame them for a little bit of recreational drug use? Actually, I did some reading about this hallucinogenic sarpa fish. Came across an incident of a man who went on vacation, enjoyed some baked sarpa fish, but after a day of blurred vision, vomiting, and muscle aches, he got himself in the car to drive him to the hospital. He only made it halfway. He was unable to continue because of all the aggressive screaming animals. Apparently, it's very common for people who have ingested this fish to see very aggressive animals around them. But I digress. Frankly, I was flabbergasted just reading this. And as I'm reading along, I realize there's only 40 pages left in the story with no sign of a resolution, which goes to say a lot happens in those last few pages. Everything gets improbably but neatly wrapped up in a little bow. And it just seemed unnecessarily rushed. We have this entire middle section with a transvestite fish that just seemed completely unnecessary to the larger story and just seemed to be there to pad out from the novella length. And again, as I explain the literary gaps, I feel a little ridiculous because we were talking about a book about rapey dolphins. So I get it. It's just not for me. Maybe I'm being unnecessarily harsh on the book and I'm just not quite getting what Laileen Paul's trying to achieve here. I mean, it made the shortlist along with Demon Copperhead. So if you've had a chance to read this and just explain to me what the heck I'm missing or what is going on there that I'm just not quite getting because this thing didn't work for me. Anyway, that's it. I've got a week before we head off to another slate of trade shows and traipsing around to different cities. As a result, my reading is going to suffer. I was looking at my numbers. The reading this year is the worst it's been numbers-wise in the last 10 years. And again, the reading's been great. I've been enjoying it. It's not been a slump. It's just I've been really, really busy as trade show season ramps up with our work and they've been sending me just out and about, which is lovely. I don't mind. But uh, it's been a lot. Anyway, it's going to be a lot of that in the next few weeks. In the meantime, and unrelated, is uh, I'm really discovering as the summer months come in, I'm enjoying gin. Gin and tonic? Fantastic. The Tanqueray Fleur de Sevilla with a little bit of fever tree tonic is chef's kiss in the summertime. Anyway, it's not like I need another liquor to add to the cabinet. But uh, gin, gosh, pretty darn nice. Anyway. That is it for me this week. I hope you all have a better week of reading than I've been having lately. And we'll talk to you again soon.